Hi there and welcome to Simmer Smoke. Yes, we finally have a YouTube name. If you haven't seen the previous videos before, um, obviously you already know that we have a name because you are seeing my YouTube channel with a name. But this is the first audio that I record because I've been recording the videos in advance where I already knew the name of the channel. And I'm really, really excited. I really like it. it took a while to come up with it. Let me know your thoughts about it. So welcome to Simmer Snook. I can finally say that. My name is Patricia. I'm an artist and illustrator in my other life, on my other YouTube channel. But here we will do cozy simmer stuff and cozy builds. So about this video, this is the third video on my first series ever here on this channel and what I'm doing here is renovating base game starter houses. I don't know if eventually I will renovate the rest of base game but for now I'm starting with base houses and I was thinking about eventually after finishing this ones I'll move along to the other base game houses in the other packs. So I know that in previous updates a lot of the starter houses are prettier and are designed by, by other simmers and people that can build. <laughs> I'm not saying that people on the base game sims can't build but they are definitely very basic and they have very weird house structures and decoration. So I don't know if I will eventually do all of that. I think I will but so far we'll do the base game. And what are the themes that I'm following here? So the plan is keeping the sort of structure base style of the house intact. So obviously I'm changing all the decoration inside, but I'm trying like to keep a theme with it. So for example, I'm not changing the outside a lot I'm keeping more or less the base structure of the house and all of that. Like I'm using it as a base for growth, <laughs> basically. So that's like my first rule. I want to kind of keep the integrity of the house, of the structure, of the build and all of that. Another thing that is really, really important is that I try to keep them under 20,000 simoleons because I want them to keep being starter houses. That's a, a really important part. Then the third thing that is really important is that I'm trying to keep like 99% of the stuff base game. So you can go in and play even if you only have the base game or the base game and just one or two expansions. To be honest, it's starting to be a little less hard to do this. The first time I was very lost. And sometimes I, I get structures of houses that are a little bit challenging. For this one, I, I fought with it a little bit. Yeah, basically that's it. That's the three things that I'm trying to, to keep up with. For this one, it took, I think, around four hours to build. This is a little bit more than what has been in my previous houses. Uh, I think the first one was around two hours, a little bit over two hours. The third one was around three hours. But I had an idea for this house and I really wanted to do it. I'll tell you more in a second. I had the good thing that this house was really cheap, so I had a lot of money left. I What I've been doing to be able to tell how much money I'm spending is putting a sim on it so I know how much I'm spending. The thing is I've noticed that when you take off the sim you have a, a couple thousand left. So that's a good thing, that's a good rule of thumb that I'm having so I know I can spend all the money of the sim and sometimes I have even a little wiggle room. In this one we kept it I think in 17,000 simoleons which is a really nice price. So after all of that I think it's time we start talking about the house. The first thing that I do is basically I take off everything in the house. In this one I didn't take off the bathroom and the, and the bedroom. Like, I think that's fine. What I didn't like was the sort of like the kitchen there in the middle but with the walls and all and with like one little hallway in every side. At the beginning I didn't know what to do with it. Like I was completely lost. So I started working on the outside of the house in this past build. So I started with the outside so I can know more or less what I want to do. With that I kind of decide in a color scheme that I'm using for the houses. I'm going a little monochromatic and I'm picking like one color or a maximum like two colors. One thing that I knew from the beginning in this house was one, I want to make the little entrance, the little, oh my god, I can't come up with a name. Well, the little entrance of the house um, has a really nice space and I think it has a nice view and looks really nice. In the previous build here in Willow Creek, I didn't use that space too much, but here I thought that I wanted to make it larger. So one of the first things that I did was that I made the space 
of the kitchen living room smaller, pull it a little bit back and have a little bit more space there. And then my second thought for this build was that I really wanted to make it like for a sim that really enjoys gardening and plants and being surrounded by nature. Because I mean, it's called Daisy Hovel. And yes, it has this patch of daisies, but I don't feel like it's enough because you have all of this terrain around it and it's empty. And this is obviously very normal in starter houses. I thought that maybe with debug objects we will be able to make a luscious wild garden. I didn't want to make it like a, a pretty and decorated like perfectly designed garden. I wanted to make it something that's a little wild but like cozy. And with that I worked for quite a while and that's I think why it took the longest to do this house. As usual, I fight a lot with windows and doors and all because I want to make it look cohesive and one of the things that I've noticed for this house is that they're all like slightly dark. Uh, this one, not as much and the other one in Willow Creek, not as much, but the one in the desert was super duper dark. I try to give it nice windows so you can, you know, have bright lighting inside of the house. I struggled for a while to know what to do inside of the house and when I stopped renovating the outside of the house, I took a break from it because I had to work and I left it. Later on the day the idea popped into my mind and I really really love how the kitchen of this renovation looks like. I love the living space that I did there. For the inside of the house I chose yellow and I'm gonna tell you up front I don't really love yellow. Why did I choose it then? Uh, well first of all because I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone so I'm also trying to get to use different colors that I maybe I wouldn't have used in a normal situation. What I'm trying to do when deciding what colors to use, I try to check what colors they used in the build and I saw that in the main space, in the living room, they used like this yellow, how would you call it, like pastel yellow, a very muted yellow, and I thought that maybe a little bit of a egg yolk kind of yellow will look nice and will give it a nice punch because I feel that these builds are always very muted and also the color schemes are all over the place. The kitchen went through quite a few adjustments. So yeah, you will see me fighting with that <laughs> for quite a while. I made it a little smaller. But then after making the kitchen, I realized that I had left like a little bit of a tighter space for the living room. Like I didn't want it to make it huge, but I thought it made it look like crumpled up. And I didn't want it to make it look crumpled up. So I made the house larger again. So basically I think that it ended up being exactly the same as it was in the beginning. So I know I'm talking about the kitchen a lot but it's like the portion that I think I fought the most with but I also think is the portion that gives the most personality to this house. I knew that I didn't want this house to have a table and chairs to eat in, that I wanted to have like an island type of kitchen. And to be honest, in my Sims builds, the ones that I use, I end up doing that a lot. I usually just put an island with a couple of chairs. I, I kind of like that look and I feel like it even saves some space. And the last fight with the kitchen was when I realized that I wanted to put the living room part on the side where I put the big window because you might have noticed that I moved the main door to the side. I realized that I didn't like it in the middle as I did with the first build. Not just to differentiate it but also because I wanted to make like a cozy nook outside and this way I have like more space in one of the sides and I put a big window there composed of three windows and there I wanted to be the living room part because I just thought it was logical. So after I finally settled for a design for the kitchen, I realized that I should switch to the other side. So basically what I did is skip it the same, but switch the island to the left side instead of the right side. So I could have that a little bit more space to move to the living room without feeling too crumpled up. And then we finally get out of the kitchen and move on to the bathroom that I kept really, really simple. Initially, you can see that I placed a shower in the middle, but I didn't like it. And then I added this little wall. This is like, I thought, yeah, well, it matches the kitchen. I've done this little thing with the wall before to hide like the toilet. Then we moved on to the bathroom and I fought for a little bit with the color scheme because I wanted to keep it yellow. At first, I didn't love it. It felt like very, very much of the same. And then I tested out a few of the beds and I didn't love the swatches of the yellow beds. One was way too bright. So eventually I settled up in this red bed. 
And I will say that the living room and the bathroom were the ones that I fought less with because in the living room I had it very clear that I wanted to keep the yellow theme so I just picked a yellow couch that didn't cost too much but was also nice. And I was surprised by the time I finished the whole house that this time I had plenty of money to add maybe a few rugs and a few things around the house without being only left with the debug section. So yeah, I I was super glad that this was the first time uh, on these three builds that I had enough money left after I finished to have wiggle room to play around with things and also made me feel like I'm starting to get used to this. By this time, we're probably just adding the finishing touches to the house, uh, like decorations to make it feel more cozier, and then we'll move on to the garden. This part always takes a while, just as the decoration part takes a while, because I go through debug objects like five times. So yeah, I think that this might have been... The... I don't know if the one that took the most time, but definitely took almost as much time as the building of the inside of the house took. About the outside, I really don't have much to say, because most of what I did was go through the debug, find things, test them out, and then eventually, little by little, I ended up adjusting them so they looked good. Eventually, I had a little bit of a clearer idea of what I wanted. What I came up with was I wanted to have like a little pathway. I decided to use what we had in the starter house, which was this like rock pathway. I continued that and I wanted to make like a gardening nook. And then in the back of the house, I wanted to make like a little nook where you can just sit and chill uh, surrounded by plants, maybe with a book. And I had this idea like from the very beginning, I just didn't know exactly how to execute it. Because sometimes when you're building the whole thing and you start building the gardens, it looks like very ugly until you place everything. I wanted like to mainly use plants that look like flowers or flower bushes or things that look like daisies. Because I wanted to keep up with the theme, like if it's called Daisy Hovel, it wouldn't only have like a little patch of daisies in the front. I thought that it should have more, because I wanted it to look like a little wild space where there's a lot of daisies and flowers around. You will see me fighting a lot, trying to find the right plants, but then I also didn't want to use all the time the same four plants. I tried to find some variation to put around the house. I knew that I wanted to have on the side of the house something that looks kind of like you have a bush around the house, but I still wanted to make it look untidy. So for that, I used like random bushes. They're not all the same ones. And then for the gardening nook, I had a problem. And I realized that here in base game, we didn't have the planters. Like I looked for them and I couldn't find them. I wanted to have planters so your sim can do gardening in this house because it feels like it will match. So eventually what I did is I found in debug some planters with flowers. So they look like you've planted them there and you're taking care of them. And I still like it. I think it looks really good. I'm just a little sad that I couldn't put the right planter so you can do gardening there. Another thing that I ended up doing is I added a little pond in the back. I just suddenly had the urge to add a little pond. I just added a tree and a few more bushes around it and it adds to the mismatch of the garden that looks like a little wild. So yeah, that's all. That's all that I have to say, I feel like I've been talking forever. Even though I kind of feel a little bit like I went overboard with the plants, I also really like how it came out. I hope you enjoyed this build, I hope you enjoy the results, and if you want to see me renovating more base game, stay tuned for this channel because I'm planning to do a lot of things here and I'm really really excited. So I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching, give it a like if you enjoyed it, and have a nice day! Bye!